Hello and welcome to the part 23 of my F1 2024 season simulation. If you missed the last part, part 22, make sure to check that one out before watching this video. That was the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, the last one in 2023 we had. That was quite a good one. So perhaps this could be another good race. Anyways, let's get back into this. Qatar Grand Prix, round 23. This is the penultimate race of the season and simulation. And also the last sprint race as well. Uh, obviously it's Qatar, so there's not really much to say about the weather. Uh, well, try to say it again. Uh, no rain expected anyway uh, for the entire weekend. Yeah, uh, in terms of upgrades, there's just... Yeah, it's, it's, it's the end of the season. No teams really really want to bring anything. It's just they're just bringing random ideas that they their cost cap just allow them to, honestly. Uh, those are not going to change anything, uh, pretty much. As yeah, yeah. I'm weird list. This is set, and yeah, let's get straight into sprint shootout for the Qatar Grand Prix SQ1. Charles Leclerc top of the session ahead of Max Verstappen. And it's Carol Sainz, Carol Sainz in P3, and it's Ocon, Gasly, Perez, Alonso, Russell, Stroll, Norris, PS3, Hamilton, Sunoda, Alcari, Albon, and provisionally knocked out in sprint shootout one is Sergeant Magnuson, Bottas, Joe, and Daniel Ricciardo, who uh, set only a one lap time, and then on the second lap time, unfortunately, had a driver error, so had to come back to the pits, and that pretty much explains the gap between him and Sunoda in this case. Uh, other than that, uh, another good weekend for Alpine, it seems like. And Mercedes and McLaren seem to struggle again, which is a weird thing to say, because last year, obviously, Mercedes and, uh, and McLaren were the closest challengers to Red Bull. And at, at some point in Qatar, uh, they seemed like the favorite from the actual weekend. Uh, in my opinion, McLaren should have won the Grand Prix itself if it wasn't for their qualifying... Uh, things they did with drivers unfortunately left and leave but those things happen unfortunately anyways uh let's get into the final one if there are any changes and i believe there's only one change that's carl signs and losing his lap time dropping from p3 to p6 but it still should be fine uh, as that is, that's comfortably in q2 uh thinking, speaking of q2 let's see uh max is having top sq2 provisionally Head of Charles Leclerc and Carl Sainz in P3. Then it's Russell, Ocon, Hamilton, Stroll, Gadley, Alonso, and Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, head of 2 McLaren's, we were provisionally knocked out. Uh, PS3, Norris, and it's Albon, Hockenberg, and Perez. We have no time set. That's due to the driver error. Unfortunately, uh, Perez had an incident and couldn't continue the session. Um, yeah, let's see if there are any changes. As there are, I believe, no changes for this time. So, knocked out in SQ2 in Qatar, are the both McLarens, uh, shockingly. Uh, Piastri had Norris here, that's Albon P13, P14 for Hulkenberg, and P15 for Perez, with no time set. Uh, yeah, this is, this is interesting. Perez, Mercedes, Mercedes seem to have followed some pace in, uh, in Q2, uh, unlike McLaren, uh, are in that fight for, for a third fastest team, very much. So yeah, let's see. SQ3, as we have Carl Sainz on a provisional pole position for the sprint in Qatar, head of Charles Leclerc. And it's Max Verstappen in P3, Esteban Ocon with a great P4, thanks to two Aston Martin cars of Alonso and Stroll, very close to each other, three tens of uh, sorry, three thousands of a second separating them. Then it's Lewis Hamilton P7, soon that P8. Uh I want to point this out, soon a very good qualifying so far. Uh, even though it's a sprint only, uh, Russell P9 and Pierre Gasly could only manage a P10. Uh, unfortunately, compared to his teammate, uh, lacking half by half a second almost. So let's see if there are any changes. Is there are no changes. This is how things stand. Carl Sainz is on pole for the sprint. So let's recap the sprint grid for, for Qatar Grand Prix. It's Carl Sainz on sprint pole position, or whatever you want to call it. Charles Leclerc lines up, lines up alongside, so with Ferrari went two in the sprint so far. Uh, well, on the starting grid at least. Verstappen in P3, then it's Ocon, Alonso, Stroll, Hamilton, Sunoda, Russell, and Gasly to complete the top 10. Starting outside of the top 10 are PS3, Norris, Albon, Hulkenberg, Perez, Sargent, Magus, and Bottas, Joe, and Daniel Ricciardo starting from last place. 
Okay, let's see what the Qatar Grand Prix Sprint will bring us. So we can see Carlos Sainz winning the Qatar Sprint ahead of Max Verstappen in P3, also P2 and P3. Completing the Sprint podium is Fernando Alonso. Uh, very, very good result from Alpine, Gasly in P4, uh, making up six places. Very, very impressive Sprint from the French driver. Then it's Obviously, Charles Leclerc dropping three places, not the greatest sprint from him. Esteban Ocon in P6, then it's last draw P7, and Lewis Hamilton in P8. Uh, that was the last point being position, just outside the points in the sprint. There's Russell, then it's Perez, Sunoda, Piastri, Albon, Hockerberg, Sargent, Norris all the way down in P16. Yeah, this, this is, looks very, very upsetting for McLaren. Uh, Magnussen P17, P18 for Daniel Ricciardo, only could manage it to, uh, to go up two positions from his grid spot. I said that went backwards, so it doesn't seem like the, the car had the greatest race pace ever. Uh, Joe had a Bottas for the last two positions for the Sauber team, as, as pretty much almost the entire season at this point. Yeah. This is the disorder sprint results. So uh, with half of the weekend done, let's move into the main qualifying for the Grand Prix. As we have Charles Leclerc topping provisionally Q1 out of Max Verstappen and Carl Sainz in P3. It's Pierre Gasly. So the Alpines seem to carry their speed through sprint into the main event as well, at least provisionally. Perez in P5, Hamilton P6, Sunil P7. Uh, Norris P8, Ocon P9, and Fernando Alonso P10, Oscar Piastri P11, Stroll P12, Russell P13, P14 for Bottas, P15 for Ricardo. Then, provisionally knocked out in Q1 are Alban, Magnussen, Sargent, Hulkenberg, and Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, yeah. Quite a, quite, a, quite a gap between Bottas and Joe here as well in the, in the little style circuit. Um, McLaren still struggling. Uh, I don't really want to say, don't really know what to say. Aston Martin, uh, kind of struggling Q1 so far. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's see, there are any changes as I believe, uh, I think there are no changes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no changes for this one. So officially knocked out in Q1 in Qatar, qualifying are Alex Albon, Kevin Magnussen, Logan Sargent, Nico Oldenburg, and Guan Yu Zhou. So Q2. Max Verstappen tops Q2 provisionally with Charles Leclerc in P2, Carl Sainz P3. He's like, uh, this, this stuff for is pretty much set, set for this, for this, for his entire weekend at this point with Perez in P4, Alonso P5, Piastri P6. Very impressive time from Piastri. That's P7 for Russell and the two Alpine cars, Ocon Hill of Gasly and P10. Uh, just making it through into Q2 provisionally is Lewis Hamilton. Uh, P11 just outside the top 10 for originally is Yuki Tsunoda. Then is Lance Stroll, then is Daniel Ricciardo, Baltas, and Lana Norris. We have no time stat. That's due to a reliability issue. Unfortunately, couldn't go out of the garage to set a flying lap. And only one McLaren is in Q2, sorry, in Q3. That's already better than the sprint. So, so yeah. Okay. You know. No, there's a there's a one since singular change that I that I want to mention. Perez gets his lap time deleted, drops from P4 to P4. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> just want to say that <laughs> this is how things that knocked out in Q2 officially. Arsenal, the Stroll, Ricardo, Bottas, and Norris. You free time as we have Charles Leclerc lining up on three original pole position so far, but a toast caps between P2 and P3, P4. Uh, yeah. P2, Max Verstappen, uh, and Fernando Alonso in P3, one thousandth of a second behind Max Verstappen. Perez, very close behind them as well in P4. Carl Sainz in P5, and the two Alpine cars uh, high up in the, uh, in the roster as well. Ocon had a Gasly. Piastri P8 beat both Mercedes cars, Hamilton P9, and Russell in P10, who also suffered from a reliability issue, unfortunately. Uh, as we get to the end of the season, the, the power units are uh, behaving the best, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just RNG, but whatever. Uh, provisional qualifying. So let's go into the final one. If there are any changes, and there are no changes as far as I'm aware. Yep, just checked in. There are no changes, and yeah, this is how things stand. Let's recap the starting grid for the guitar Grand Prix. So we have Charles Leclerc lining up on another pole position, uh, probably his 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm correct, but we're getting close to 30 pole positions from Charles Leclerc. Uh, maybe even the simulation. I'm not very really sure. So I'm gonna uh, take blind guesses. Max is having an P2 ever since this in the sprint, uh, in sprints, uh, in the simulation. Uh, P3 for Alonso, P4 for Perez, then it's Sainz, Ocon, Gasly, PS3, Hamilton, and Russell. Starting outside of points is Yuki Snowda, Dennis Stroll, Ricardo, Bottas, Norris, Alban, Magnussen, Sargent, Hulkenberg, and Guanajuato starting from the last place. So, Qatar, Qatar Grand Prix. Uh, last year it was, it was a chaotic Grand Prix, uh, to say the least. Yeah, four, four pit stops mandatory or something like that. It was just, just craziness. But also was on the was on the bad side of the craziness as it was really really tough on the drivers as well. So yeah, um, this time having it later in the year probably would help. But there's also Las Vegas late later in the year, and we already had a cold climate in there, so I don't know what to think. Anyway, let's get into the in the race results as we have Max Verstappen winning another Grand Prix in the simulation with the fastest lap as well. Head of Charles Leclerc from pole position, losing another win to Max Verstappen. And it's just, these, these things have ride themselves pretty much. Uh, P3 for Carlos Sainz. Uh, so, double Ferrari podium once again. It is the third or second time in a row. Uh, P4 for Checo Perez. Then it's Ocon in P5. So, good weekend for Alpine on Sunday as well. P6 for PS3. So, finally, some good points for McLaren, even though P6 is, I mean, not the greatest. For a team that was supposed to fight for the constructor championship halfway for the season, P7 for Gasly. Yeah, it, it, this makes you think like if if Alpine would have started the season with with this car, would they actually like be fighting for at least P3 in the current constructors? It, it could be. Obviously, the, the how the upgrades work means that this Alpine that's that's right there is probably faster than the Red Bull at the start of the season. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want to like. Uh, Meaning that way. Anyways, let's uh, read Russell in P8, uh, P9 for Hamilton and Lastro getting the last last point essentially from from the from, from P10. P11 for Sonoda, P12 for Ricardo, P13 for Lionel Norris, P14 for Alex Alban, Ennis Bottas P15, Magnussen P16, Holker P17, Sergeant P18, Guayajo, last finishing drivers in P19 with Alfred Alonso. Suffering another engine failure. I think this is the second time in a row. Uh, DNFs through the, from the Grand Prix, but causes no disturbances to race. No, not even my virtual safety car. It was a it was a pretty pretty quiet one. Just retired in the pits. So yeah, uh, this are the race results. Let's see how it affected the standings after round twenty three. So this is the last or oh, 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 second last change to the to the drivers championship, basically, as the last race is the next one. Max Verstappen on 431 points, 8 victory, 16 podiums, 10 pole positions, and 14 fastest laps. Just, just world pro drive champion numbers, pretty much. Just a little less impressive as last year's and um, the year before, pretty, that pretty much as well. P2 for Fernando Alonso so far, but the gap is closing, closing in. Charles Leclerc is almost, uh, almost there. So that's an interesting fight for P2 in the championship. Uh, P, uh, three victories for Alonso, eight podiums, three poles, and two fastest laps. Charles Leclerc in P3, 262 points, three victories, six podiums, three poles, and four fastest laps. Norris stays in P4, 227 points, three victories, seven podiums, two poles, and a fastest lap. Perez remains in P5, 218 points, victory, and six podiums. Carlos Sainz uh, jumps P3 to P6 now, 206 points. Uh, victory, seven podiums and two pole positions. PS3 drops to P7, 198 points, two victories, five podiums, three poles, and a fast slap. And it's George Russell in P8, 179 points, a victory, and seven podiums. Just behind him, Lewis Hamilton in P9 so far, a victory, and two podiums. Then Stroll in P10, 121 points. Uh, Two podiums. Okay. P11 for Esteban Ocon jumps Gasly once again, now by one single point. So, <laughs> yeah, this is going to the wire to the last race, pretty much, with the Alpine being a point scoring car right now. Uh, yeah, the, the fight, this fight for P11 is kind of interesting. Ocon with 76 points, Gasly with 75 and a podium. 
Sooner than P1353 points, then it's the, the bottom bottom seven pretty much who just don't really score points anymore. P9, uh, sorry, P14 for L, then P19 uh, points on the podium. P15 for Okamari, 18 points on the podium. P16 for Sajan, 16 points. 17th place Ricardo, 15 points. 18th place Bottas, 5 points. 19th place Magnussen, a singular point. And a driver yet to score points in the simulation, Guayajou in P20. So, instructors is here. Red Bull, 649 points. 9 victories, 22 podiums. That's a, little, that's a big number. 10 pole positions and 14 fastest laps. Then it's Ferrari in P2, 468 points, 4 victories, 13 podiums, 5 poles, and 4 fastest laps. McLaren with the second most wins, but uh, still in P3, 425 points, 5 victories, 12 podiums, 5 pole positions, and 2 fastest laps. Austin Martin remaining in P4. Uh, the, this constructor's well seems to pretty much settle for every single team, unless uh, one of these teams get like. 30 point uh, gain on another team, which is probably not happening well, uh, because it's the last race and it's not even a sprint race, so yeah, it's probably unlikely. Uh, Aston Martin, 389 points, 3 victories, 10 podiums, 3 pulls, and 2 passes laps. Mercedes P5, 320, 353 points, 2 victories, 9 podiums, and a passes lap. Is the Alpine team, 151 points on the podium. Racing will steam, 68 points. Still showing the uh, of the nice number, thirty-five points for Williams in P8 podium. That's nine. I place has P19, uh, P9, ninety points, uh, and a podium. P10 for Sauber, five points. Yeah, last Sauber. I honestly wouldn't expect Sauber to finish P10 in the constructors based on what they started the year. Obviously, they they had a gap over over Haas, but they were considerably slower than the rest of the field as well. It was like, yeah, I don't see Haas scoring any points, and I just scored a podium, a freaking podium, so yeah, yeah, yeah. simulation could bring it, could have brought anything, and it just brought a uh, whole cover slash Haas podium for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. the next race, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the last race of the simulation and of this season. 24 races is quite a, lot, quite a big number, so that's going to be a lot of content throughout this year. Hopefully I can re-monetize again, and I'm pretty sure we'll be fine. I'm really glad I'm coming to the end of the simulation. It's been very, very tough on me to manage it time-wise to finish just as testing starts, because uh, I'm going to upload another video tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, today, actually. It's going to be uh, within an hour or two after this one. So double upload today. Hopefully uh, it's going to work all right. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from my content going forward. And yeah, uh, yeah, this is, it. this is hopefully gonna pop up in some people's algorithm because right now YouTube is kind of killing my algorithm because I'm a relatively big channel uh, compared to my views. I have like over a thousand subscribers, and and yeah, since since I build build the subscriber base on a different community. It's really difficult to maintain the algorithm and the algor YouTube algorithm essentially thinks I'm putting out trying to be used. So it would be helpful for you to share uh, share the videos with people that you know would be interested in this content. And yeah, as always, see you.